Hey guys, Captain Daedalus back again with some more things you need to know. These things are not just real obvious and uh, I don't know, there may be a manual somewhere, but you got me, so here I am. <laughs> As you can see, this is a through the lens shot of air car and it looks fantastic. Now, I am using a 1080p camera and it has autofocus only, so I can't adjust the focus to get it nice and crystal clear. This looks a little bit fuzzy compared to what I see with my eye looking through the lens. So don't use this video here to disqualify the AKX. The image through the lens actually is fantastic. It's really sharp, much sharper than this. So take that into account. Now on my last video, if you haven't seen it, please go over and watch it. On my last video, I talked about how to adjust the color so they're nice, deep, and rich and how to improve the contrast so the blacks are really black and the brights are really bright. It really looks good now. So in this video I'm going to talk about uh, how to import games, how to put the correct icons on it, how to where to get the icons, and a few other little details about the, the Pimax experience that aren't, are not obvious when you first get in there. So if you don't mind, now you may already know all you need to know about it, but uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to share a few of, uh, of the things I learned. And so, if you're ready, here we go. Uh, if you don't have base station, then that's something else I don't have because it can't be gotten. Not for sale, out of stock. So, your display drifts actually it's the uh, the sensors in your headset that detect movement they have a little drift in them this here this bullseye here that will recenter it this I would suggest not messing with it because this bullseye travels with this menu board and this thing, if you left click and hold it and move it, it drags the menu board to wherever you might want to go with it. The problem is it doesn't work like this here where you, wherever you stop, it stops. No, it works more like the controls of an airplane. If you've never flown an airplane, then you might not know that if you pull back on the stick and then stop wherever you pull it back to, the plane doesn't just like, you know, you pull back and it, the nose goes up and then you hold it there. The nose doesn't just keep going up at that same angle. No, if you hold it there, it keeps pulling back. The nose keeps going and going and going and going up. The pull back only changes the speed at which it goes up. The further you pull back, the faster it goes up. The less you pull back, the slower it goes up, but it keeps going up. In order to stop it, the nose from going up, you have to return it back to the zero point, and then it just keeps the plane keeps climbing. Does that make sense? It does to me, but I don't know. So same thing on going left and right. You turn, the, pull it to the left, and then just <coughs> hold it there. Well, it'll keep on going further and further and further left. It doesn't stop where you stop. Same with this little control here. If you move it to the right a little bit and then stop, it just keeps on moving to the right. You have to move it back to the center and that's, it's, um, it's too tricky. I've lost it several times and I had to reboot my headset to return it. Now, it just so happens I've got my headset on the desk and it's, it's tilted a little bit. That's not the problem of uh, the headset really. But I have had a problem with the headset tilting, and let me share with you how to fix that. Unfortunately, the fix for that is not in the Pimax experience. You have to go to Pi Tools. In the settings, in your head mounted display, down at the bottom, a horizontal calibration. It does not mean left and right, it means tilt. So you just click on it 
well there you go there was a tilt to it all right the best thing to do is to lay it on a level surface like the table in front of you or a desk if you're sitting at a desk or whatever and then click on your horizontal calibration so it has a little feature that Sweeviver Martin ought to be uh, happy about at not just Martin but there's a the guys working with them they're all equally need to be proud of themselves for their work on this they've done a great job there's room for improvements but still it's a great job one of the things it does is it uh, reaches into your Steam account and it pulls out your VR titles. Now, I don't have a whole lot of VR titles right now, but I do have other accounts that are not Steam. And it would benefit you to migrate all of those games and other accounts, migrate them to the Steam account. It's just the easiest way to, to access them in, in, in the Pimax experience. Now, but that's not good enough for me because while I'm waiting on the controllers to be <laughs> finally available I'm just using my mouse and keyboard and it's not adequate for these games so I have some 2d games that I really like and I have Vorpex I don't know if you've heard of Vorpex I'm sure most of you have it'll take a 2d game and make a three-dimensional game out of it and if you're lucky something approximating VR but um, the only way to see the th stereoscopic vision is through using your Pimax headset so I want those games here as well they're not VR games I want them here though well I migrated them all to the my Steam account but this only pulls the VR games not all those other ones so I had to go I've started importing them into the Pimax experience and it's a tedious process but it'll pay off in the end so let me go to my imported here so how to do that so click on import enter a title let's go select the file first see if I, uh, there we go I should have games in G shouldn't I now, this is a bigger hard drive all right let's do beyond two souls I don't even know if I can play this with uh, Vorpex, but uh, okay, Beyond Two Souls. There we go. Let's go back to get an image. Okay, yeah, yeah, these are good. Um, I guess you guys can tell I like games that are, are a little bit different. Uh, that's just always been my way. I, not just same as everybody else. You want to try to match it as closely as you can to the placard dimensions. So let's click on this one and see what we have over here. That's pretty good. She's an interesting actress. I haven't seen her in a while. Can't think of her name. If anybody can think of it, let me know. Alright, let's type in the title here. I'm reaching around my headset that's lying on the desk in front of me, so it's uh, kind of messing with my typing. Alright, go back to the headset, which is this cube here. My headset is facing directly forward in front of me. You see it's rotated to the image is rotated to the right. The headset appears to rotate to the left. Click on here. There we go. Pull it back. All right. Well, the click worked all right that time. I don't know what's going on. Beyond two souls. Oh, we, we're, we're looking for the image. We're not looking for the game thing. The image, I'm, I'm keeping a separate file here. Game icons for Pi Tool. Oh, well, it's working fine now. Beyond Two Souls. Here we go. That's what. Wow. All the clicks are working. It is a little bit shifted, but it'll be okay. All right. Enter a title.
okay. If uh, Survivor happens to see this, uh, I'm asking that you give us a way to disable these um, subtitle sort of thingies that tell us what's in the game. It would be even better if I could disable them individually. Let me right click on it. No, nope, nothing. Okay. So there you go, guys. That's the way to import your games. You have to go to each one individually, although I know it's a pain in the rear. I would highly suggest that you go to each one individually and import them into here. Because like I said, like this Californium, it's not a VR game. It's not really the best game for VR, but um, uh, the Lifeless Planet is not a VR game. Inside is not a VR game. Inside is incredible in VR. So I, I have to fire up my Vorpex, then I can go ahead and put my headset on and then click on inside here. Even though it's a 2D game, the Vorpex will take over, make it a 3D game, and go. So I don't have to pull the headset off and click on it on my computer and then put a headset on and it's all right here. So that's the way I suggest doing it, even, even though it's a, a bit of a hassle to do it this way. But I suggest doing it anyway. All right, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. I know sometimes my I sound a little monotone, and uh, I've been told spice it up a bit. Well, <laughs> I hope that it's more important to you to get the information than it is to be spiced up. It's part of my training, actually. Um, when you're in a situation in the military that might get you. Uh, a little overly excited the uh, ability to communicate becomes problematic if you let your emotions get into the way you talk so you know you have to be able to communicate uh, the enemy is just over the ridge uh, you need to drop please drop your bomb you know whatever you know what I'm saying you don't want to be screaming and hollering into the radio you, you pa dear passengers please brace for impact <laughs> You don't want to be screaming at, screaming at them. <laughs> We're all going to die. No. Speak calmly, succinctly, clearly, no matter what the situation is. So uh, I apologize if my tone is not entertaining. But I hope I provided you with some information that might be helpful. Thanks for watching, guys. And again... Thank you so much for all the kind comments and all the views that have been just amazing, a, a real surprise for me. And if you've liked this, please let me know about it. I click on like, and I don't really expect a whole bunch of subscribers because I'm just starting out. And who knows, who knows what I'll be able to do. But if you feel like you can subscribe to me, you feel generous enough, that would really help out. I, I would really appreciate that. And um, if you have any comments, any suggestions on things you'd like to see, or if you have any comments on how I can improve this, I'd be happy to receive both of those. So uh, let me know. Until next time, I'm Captain Daedalus, out. <laughs>